Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And today, my special guest is a young lady by the name of Felicia Heimer. I just met recently from the desert southwest, and I thought it'd be great to get her on here and have her perspective on all of this. Felicia, welcome to the podcast. Hello, David. It's good to see you again. You too, you too. So as I mentioned previously, I try to get people's perspectives. It may help other people that don't have maybe the same imagination or work ethic or whatever it might be. But let me start off with this. What has been your best coping mechanism to deal with all this madness after six or seven weeks or whatever it's been now? Quite honestly, it's been media distancing. Mm, I'm a researcher and a writer. um, And I find myself naturally drawn to the news and needing more facts. And in the very beginning, I was spending an unbelievable amount of time researching and and studying numbers and even doing screenshots of statistics and comparing from day to day. And it was becoming very dangerous and very negative for me. Uh, I decided, it's been almost five weeks, (laughs) I've decided uh, to distance myself from the media. I think it's incredibly important to keep a very good mental health as well as physical health. And for me personally, I've been the happiest I've been in years. (laughs) And I think a lot of it's been self-reflection. A lot of it's been focusing on um, the resources that I have and, and the things that quite honestly, I had been too busy to notice um, the past decade or so. So for me, you know, definitely the media distancing where I'm, I literally do not watch the news, don't look at numbers. Wow. Literally hands that'll, that will update me. And, the, and if something major arises, they let me know. And some people may call it naive, but for me personally, it's been an incredibly healthy choice. I think that's really, really smart. Now, so you might understand, were you doing this prior to the pandemic in terms of kind of distancing yourself from the news and all the media and that kind of thing, or just it started around there? No, no I, was, I was very active in, in watching the news is going on in the world around me. I've always been the type of person, though, that really wants to focus on the positive and and what I'm putting into my head. So for example, if I'm watching television, if I'm reading a book, even though that I put around me, I make sure that it's very positive. Um, I personally don't like to watch violent or, or it's a little too stressful, especially now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for years I've that's been, that's been kind of practice in that I try to stay on the positive side of things, but as far as the media distancing, I have stood up. I, I don't need that kind of draw right now. I've been more creative. I've been happier. I've honestly, I don't have to focus on the negative of what's happening in the world right now. Obviously, I'm very aware. And, you know, on a daily basis, I'm in touch with people who are directly affected by this disease, whether it's healthcare mm-hmm. workers or I have oh, wow. a very good friend. I have a very good friend who's in the Hopi Nation um, helping to get masks to them. I put together a team of people who are sewing masks and oh, getting donations for things. So I'm I'm well connected. I'm I'm not I'm not completely oblivious to what's going on. But for me personally, it's you know I have to focus on positive. I have two very close friends who have um, contracted the virus and they've also oh, wow. recovered. Oh, wow. um, one one of my friends, Renee, actually um, was playing and, and came back and knew that she wasn't feeling well. And, and they recovered at home. Another one of my friends in Arizona um, was not as fortunate. Um, she did have to go into the hospital, but recovered after several weeks. So oh, that's nice. it's positive. Yes. So it's positive that, that people are recovering from this. And and again, focusing on the positiveness and focusing on what we can do, you know, from our own homes to, to help other people, whether it's to give a phone call to someone who's distancing alone, or um, I had a girlfriend whose daughter had a birthday, and I dressed up in a silly costume and stood in, across the street from them and sang happy birthday. And, oh, nice. You know, she wasn't able to have a birthday party, but 
for me, I think being able to give back to other people also takes the focus off of, you know, the that's going on around you. That's great. That's great. And I really like that too. I heard somebody once say, uh, was it a news diet or information diet or something like that to get away from it? Because it's pretty crazy. I'm old enough to remember when John Kennedy was killed. And of course, we had the towers and it seemed like the first few days, all you did was watch TV. And at some point, you've got to get away from that. And so but next, next question, Felicia, as kind of the gratitude guy, that's my moniker. That's what I do. I talk about gratitude all the time and push gratitude journals and so forth. Did you, def did you find, were you grateful for different things after the pandemic uh, started or was it kind of the same things or did it change at all once we got into all this? I think that it amplified the things that I was grateful for prior to all of this happening. I have two incredible sons, one in college and one in high school. I've always, you know, been very grateful for them. Uh, but my older son is home from college now. He was supposed to have an internship this summer. I was barely going to get to see him at all this year. Mm. And I've been able to see him almost every day. And oh, wow. you know, I'm grateful for that time. I'm, of course, grateful for the time I have with my younger son. You know, we've had a chance to really bond as a family again. I think, you know, for one thing, this pandemic has really forced us to stay at home, um, but it's also forcing us to live in the moment. And you can either resist it or you can embrace it. For me, I decided about five weeks ago that I was going to embrace it. You know, I have a home where I'm safe. Um, my sons are, are with me, we're healthy. Um, I've spent a lot of time reconnecting with friends and family, especially mm -hmm. people that I haven't had the time to really have good conversations with. I think we become so reliant on text messaging that sometimes it's just so important to have that eye to eye conversation with them, whether it's over a Zoom conference or FaceTime. But I'm really finding that that's also helping me too. So I can see that my parents are doing okay in another city and I can and I can see someone's expression and I can really focus on a conversation with them. You know, we multitask a lot um, and we don't realize as Americans until our lives are completely simplified how, how chaotic our days can be and how much we multitask. Right. And for me, you know, going back to your question though about, you know, has, have things changed? I think I've had more time to focus on hobbies. I've had more time to, enjoy the things in my house. I've had an antiques business for years and I've not really enjoyed it. I've, as much as I would have liked to, you know, I'm surrounded by things, but you know, I'm reading books and I'm, I'm spending more time decorating and doing the things that I didn't have time to do. That's really good. That's really good. And I think reconnecting with your, your sons and it, somebody said the other day, and a person I was doing one of these with recently said something about this multitasking is really a joke. It, it's been proven it doesn't work. And we're so busy and I'm talking to you, but typing the text and doing this and writing that and so on and so forth. So that's neat to, to see some of the silver linings that have come out of all this too. And kind of with that in mind, is somebody in talking to you the other day and getting you to know a little bit about uh, the amount of things that you take on, the amount of projects and different things that you've done and are doing and will be doing. Do you have any thoughts or ideas for people that might be stuck in their house or condo or townhouse or something about things they can do while we're kind of housebound and for this downtime that might be helpful to them? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I did in the very beginning, I'm a list person, as you are as well, and I started to make a list. Of, well, let me back up for a minute. I, I lost both of my jobs um, when the pandemic hit. I'm a oh, substitute wow. teacher and I'm also a photo stylist. Um, so unfortunately I lost my work um, in those areas. I'm still um, working on some other projects, but I, I wanted to take stock and take inventory of what resources I had um, and what, what my talents are, what I'm able to do um, in order to get a job, in order to bring in income, in order to stay healthy mentally and physically. And I just started making a list of, of the things that I currently am doing and the things that, you know, that are goals of mine. Um, I think it was incredibly important for me to um, spend some time really evaluating um, 
you know, how much I actually had in my house to do. I, you know, again, you're so busy and you walk past things every day and you don't really realize how many books you haven't, you purchased but never read or games that you haven't played in a long time. Right. Um, I have spent a lot of time reconnecting with people. Oh, I spent a lot of time on the phone. Um, I've done driveway visits before where I stay in my car and someone's standing at their front door, you know, 25 yards away and, and we talk and, and I check in on them or drop, I've dropped off, you know, groceries or different items for people who weren't able to get out. Um, but I think it's, it's important just to, you know, to kind of look within, spend some time, again, embrace, embrace this time that you have to focus. You know, when I visited Japan um, several years ago, one of the things I noticed about the Japanese is that they don't, uh, multitask. You know, mm -hmm. when you're at a table with people, you don't have multiple conversations, regardless of how large the table is. Wow. If you're in a car with four people, the people in the back seat don't have a separate conversation from the people in the front seat. Wow. That's so neat. a lot of, it, it's a very nice tradition and it's, and it's important to really listen. And I've, I've learned the value of listening. And, and for me, you know, spend this time not only listening to others, but listen to your heart. Maybe it's a time in your life where you realize that job that you don't have right now or the job that you're trying to get really isn't the direction that you need to go. And, and truly, truly think about what you want to do because now's the perfect time to do it. You know, yeah. talk to other people about your goals and, um, you know, have have other people brainstorm with you again mm -hmm. it's it's about feeling connected and staying connected with people you know just because you're in your house and you're told to stay home does not mean that you can't connect with others right. and and you know even get out of your house occasionally to exercise I like that. And I think you've mentioned reconnecting several times, which I think is really good. And again, another one of those many silver linings through this. I mean, it's, there's negatives and housebound and people dying and suffering and different things, but there are some amazing things that will come out of this. And with that kind of in mind, and when it does end and there's the vaccine or we get back out into the society again or what have you, do you have a couple of things that you thought, boy, I'm going to hit the ground running doing this or that, that uh, now I've had a chance to brainstorm, as you said, and think about it, that when this is done, that you're going to really pursue? Well, I'm actually working on a project now, I'm building a YouTube channel, and it's, it's something that, again, it was thinking about the talents I have and what I want to do, and I honestly feel in my heart that, you know, that I've been preparing for years for this, you know, mm -hmm. and that God has prepared me, you know, for what I'm facing, not just the strength and hope of what I have. Um, right now, but also just the talents that he's given me yeah. and given all of us. Um, we each have something to offer. Everyone has a story and whether it's to tell your story or whether it's to help other people, you know, it is the privilege to serve other people. And for me, you know, I'm hoping to, you know, start this project and move forward, you know, in the next week. Um, but I'm hoping that it will be something that will continue for many, many years to come. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm sure it will be. And, and again, just chatting with you the other day and so forth. So, so last question, Miss Felicia, is do you have a, a quote or a Bible verse or a philosophy that kind of drives you or sustains you, whether it's through a tough time like this or just in general that you kind of fall back on that is the kind of the overarching philosophy that you kind of have? That's, that's a tough one because I, I love quotes and there's any um, verses out there that really help me. For, for me right now, it's be still and know that I'm God, you know, because mm -hmm. he's, he's here. You mm -hmm. know, he, if you need help, you know, you've got to ask. You, you've got to be uh, willing to ask for it. Um, but right. you also have to be willing to put in that effort that, you know, he is watching over us and amidst this incredible disease he's really helping um he's helping people to heal in more ways than one he's helping families but for more than more than anything i think it's just you know be still and and really try and focus on the important things in your life right now i i right. think that's one of the biggest lessons you know that we're 
meant to learn that, you know, we're so wrapped up in technology and climbing the ladder and, and, and so busy, you know, traveling and going different places where, you know, sometimes it's about focusing within and we don't take a lot of time in general to really sit down and take a breath and think about the things that you really, really want to do and accomplish in your life. And for me, it's mm. been, it's been life changing. It's, you know, I, I feel incredibly grateful um, for this time and as odd that it, as it seems, you know, I'm the happiest I've ever been and it's because oh, really I settled down and focused and had this time to do that. That's really neat. Somebody said to me the other day recently, if you're the grateful guy, what is there to be grateful through a terrible time like this? And I came with all sorts of things too. And you mentioned the reconnecting piece. And, and, but I think one of the things that I came up with, one of the biggest silver linings of all, maybe even at the top in terms of being grateful, was it helps you to realign your priorities. And I think our priorities get out of whack. And I think this has done a good job of maybe getting it back to what's important. And then again, reconnecting different things and having that time to brainstorm, make a list and so forth. So, well, I'm not surprised you've come up with quite a few nice little nuggets, just as I thought. So thank you, Miss Felicia Heimer, for being a guest on the podcast. Thank you so much, David. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much.